Hey, it's some old guy coding again today, and hey, check out what I got at work on the workbench here. It's a Hammond organ tone generator. It's out of a Hammond uh, M3, I believe it was. Uh, you can see one in the picture down here if I just Googled uh, Hammond M3. And this has been sitting around in a closet for quite a few years. I've always wanted to do something with it. So now, uh, this last fall, I decided to start a project with it. And uh, I want to make it controllable by MIDI. So there's going to be those of you that say, uh, why why make a, you know, a physical tone generator MIDI controlled? I mean, you can buy uh, plugins for your uh, uh, music software, your DAWs that uh, simulate uh, Hammonds. You can buy uh, new keyboards that are designed to simulate that sound. But, you know, I, I like a challenge, and uh, I don't have the money to spend on those things. And besides, this is, uh, this is fun, and I find it interesting. The tone generator is the heart of a Hammond organ. And it would normally, in this back view, be covered by a, uh, a wooden shroud kind of made out of uh, particle board, thin particle board and bent, just to keep the dust out of the workings inside there. Uh, you had to oil it once yearly. There were several little spots where you could squirt some oil into, including uh, along the motor, that would keep uh, everything lubricated because there were a lot of moving parts. This unit could generate around 85 tones um, a 1 through 12 or 1 through 13, depending on the model, were for pedal tones. And 18 through 91 were used for uh, the, the keyboards, upper and lower. Each tone was created using a magnetic rod that was uh, had a coil on the end of it and uh, a tip that would point toward a spinning metal wheel where it had a varying number of teeth. And uh, the teeth would induce uh, alternating current in the coil. The signal would then go through a filtering circuit depending on its frequency to obtain the fundamental tone. Pedal tones 1 through 12 or 1 through 13 depending on the model got no filtering at the tone generator at all. They just went directly into the uh, pedal circuit. Draw bars were used to mix the fundamental frequency and the overtones in a technique called additive synthesis to, to give the rich tones for each key that was pressed. Let's return to the tone generator itself. The large round piece on the very end is uh, the device that uh, generated the tremolo feature, while the rectangular box next to it is a synchronous motor, which would keep the mechanism uh, and all the gears and wheels turning at a constant rate based off of uh, the frequency of the AC that went uh, plugged into the wall, you know, line current. The synchronous motor would only run at one speed and didn't have enough power to bring the tone generator get it spinning up from scratch. There was the starter motor on the other end of the uh, tone generator assembly that would uh, engage and bring the uh, uh, system up to speed before one would switch over to the synchronous motor. So let's see how that starter gear engages. If we take a closer look, here's the, the starter motor on the left, uh, on the right side here rather, and it's got a, a little pinion gear in there that slides in when it's engaged and pops back out by a, a light spring. And uh, we're going to, we'll take a closer look here. You can probably see, maybe if I move the light a little bit better here, um, that little pinion gear down on the bottom there. Let's see if I can get the light just right. There we go. So that's the motor spinning. When it engages, it pulls forward and it begins to spin the, um, the tone wheel mechanism. And when you turn the starter motor off, then it retracts back. So let's take a look at that once. First we'll engage the starter motor, let it come up to speed, and then we'll flip over to the, and get a flip here, and we'll flip over to the synchronous motor, and it continues to spin. Tone wheels were driven in pairs via a gear that would attach to a central driving shaft. 
and each tone wheel was held in place by a spring rather than being fixed uh, to the shaft. That way, if uh, for some reason one of the tone wheels got jammed on something and stopped, it wouldn't stop the whole mechanism. In this picture with a finger in front of the lens, you can see the uh, magnetic rods coming in with the coils just at the top of the screen. Uh, each of those uh, magnetic rods would come close but not quite touch the uh, uh, tone wheels. Take a look at the two orange tone wheels in the center of the screen. How they have little teeth that would generate a sinusoidal pattern um, or a sine wave. And then notice the one just to the left of those where there's a notch cut out in near where my finger is in the screen. Uh, those uh, were for uh, generating pedal tones because, you know, low frequency sine waves are difficult to hear. Um, they generated a more complex signal. So overall, this uh, device is quite the little mechanical marvel here with all these moving parts, and it needs some lubrication to keep going too. On the top, there's a couple of spots to add oil, and once that oil is inserted through there, it ends up in this trough that goes all the way through the top of the machine. And inside the trough are uh, hundreds or at least dozens of little threads, with each thread going down to one of these uh, brass bushings to provide lubrication. Now over the years, you know, some of the strings have broken and or deteriorated. Some sort of a lubrication is necessary in here. Uh, I used some uh, industrial silicone spray. Uh, some people recommend different things. Some people don't recommend using the silicone spray. Um, I wouldn't use WD-40 in uh, here uh, because it dries out or MD-2020 for that matter. The actual Hammond oil is available for the purist but it's a little bit pricey. Uh, I think uh, lightweight sewing machine oil would be just fine too. So here's the definition of the problem. I want to create a MIDI instrument that generates audio output from the tone generator that sounds like a Hammond organ and has the features of a Hammond organ. To make this work, we'll need an 85 input digitally controlled mixer to take the 85 separate signals uh, 85 or so separate signals from the tone generator and mix them appropriately down to one audio output. And since we need something digital to control the mixer, we'll pop in an Arduino and control the mixer over I squared C. Also, we'll eliminate the uh, MIDI connector and we'll do USB over MIDI, being this is a Arduino, Arduino Pro Micro. It supports U the USB over MIDI library. And it wouldn't be the Hammond sound if we didn't have draw bars. So we'll add some virtual draw bars uh, controllable through uh, MIDI control um, messages. And just because we can, we'll add an adjustable attack and release. That's something that the Hammond organ doesn't have. So this is a fairly ambitious uh, project. Um, we'll see over time whether or not I can pull it off or whether I lose interest and wander off on, on something else to work on. So uh, be sure to you know follow and subscribe, and uh, we'll, the next episode will be uh, about uh, designing that 85 input or 86 or 7 input digitally controlled mixer. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Don't forget to subscribe and ring the bell so you can see future episodes from this channel. And if you'd like to help out and support this channel, uh, go to patreon.com slash coding for as little as a dollar a month. We really appreciate it. Thanks. See you soon.